Amen, amen. Let's all read the Psalms chapter 42. We sang it beautifully. Now we get to read it. Shall we please read the first two verses? Ready to go. As a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Can I have it in a more modern translation? If you have any modern passion translation, message Bible, easy Bible, NIV, anything that you have um, that is today's English. New King James, yeah, it's, I know it's New King James, but you know, something, all right, good. Passion translation, Lord, I long to drink of you, O God, drinking deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence. My longings overwhelm me for more of you. Hallelujah, verse 2. My soul thirsts, pants and longs for the living God. I want to come and see the face of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for the region of your word. Please speak to us in the language of our understanding. Touch these lips of clay and speak through me. Wear me like a garment and let your glory flow, O oh God, and let your word come with precision, with um, revelation and with uh, deeper insight. I pray that, O oh God, the entrance of your word will break yokes, set the captives free. Bring hope and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. And I welcome you again to our second service, the next service. Amen. 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 And um, we, we just came out of our 15th anniversary celebration last week. If you are not clapping, it means you missed it, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> I hope. How many of you enjoyed it? You enjoyed it? Amen. Are you still living in the 24 hours? I'm still like right there. I can't get out of that place. How do you get out of such a celebration? 24 hours of, of, of worship and of praise and prophetic worship. And this morning, I took time to thank all those who worked so hard. And I can't thank you enough. Our media team, our ushers, protocol, parking lot, our medical health, Voices of Judah. And then the leading team from Voices of Jesus that led us in the organization, all, everybody worked so hard to give us what we enjoyed last week. Amen. And all our guests also arrived back in their countries and in their cities and in their homes and everyone as well. Amen. Amen. But now I want us to look at uh, what, what God has done over the past 15 years and my assignment is to cast the vision for the next 15 years. Amen? Amen. Hello? Amen. Because the 15 is past. Yes, God has done amazing things. God has done great things for us. But one of the things that you will learn walking with God is you must learn to let go of the past quickly. <laughs> you must let, learn to, to go past it. And when we talk about the past, a lot of the, of the times we only think of the negative things. But one of the strongholds of the past that can keep us bound and captive are the successes of the past. So people find it difficult to go past yesterday's success. And they are locked in so much of the past that their language becomes, I used to. When I was this. And they live in yesterday's glories. They live in yesterday's achievement. They live in yesterday's feet. When you used to pray for 24 hours a day, when you used to fast for seven days, and it can easily become um, a box that contains you. And I realize that it is so with many Christians who cannot live past what was behind them. And especially in the areas of feet and achievement. And when you have achieved the things that God has done in 15 years, you are Almost at a point where you become like, okay, we have arrived. And so I look at the Apostle Paul's statement in Philippians chapter 3 as an encouragement to press on when he says that not that I have already obtained all this. And this is a man who had achieved so much. Yet you could stop and say that, no, I don't consider myself to have arrived. I haven't arrived at my goal. 
tap somebody and say to them, you haven't arrived yet. <laughs> Amen? He said, I have not arrived. I don't consider myself to have achieved it all, but he says that I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Christ saved me for a reason. Saved me for a bigger cause. So I may have achieved something. I may have saved some souls. We may have done some great things in the past. But he says this, I forget that which is behind and I strain toward what is ahead. In other words, I press on. You know, to press on means that there is bound to be some resistance. You cannot press where there is no resistance. You only press through opposition, press through resistance, press through barriers, press through tiredness, press through fatigue. I might be tired, but there is a goal. There is something that I must achieve. If you have you ever been to a race run or you have watched one, especially those that go on the long distance, the marathons, they start and some uh, sometime along the way, it feels like you're all gassed out. You feel like you're all tired and you can't make it. But then you remember that there is a finish line. There's a finish line for a reason. And the goal is to cross that finish line. My prayer for you this morning, this afternoon, is that you set your eyes on finishing the goal and not just focusing on the start. That is why we say that it doesn't matter how well or bad you start, it is how well you finish. May God give you the grace to finish well. Oh, your amen can be better. May God give you the grace to finish well. Finish well. You will not be remembered by how you started. You will be remembered by how you ended. And that is where legacy is written. Your legacy is not in what you did at the beginning. Your legacy is how you ended. And, and, and with what you ended with. It's not even in the inheritance because inheritance and legacy are two different things. Inheritance are the things you leave behind. The legacy are the memories you leave behind. And I pray that when the world thinks of you and the future thinks of you and your children's children call your name, they will say that you lived and you finished well. You finished your assignment. Hallelujah. And so we are pressing on. And uh, for many of you, whether you've been here a day, two days, one month, six months, 11 years, 12 years, 15 years from the beginning, you have enjoyed what God has blessed this house with. But I am here to announce to you that that 15 years is behind us. We are not caught in the 15. I'm already on the first seven days of the next 15 years. Which means that we are pressing into greater than God has done in the past. Looking forward for that he will do better and great, greater and glorious things with us in this house. And I pray that you lock in into it. And so I am speaking on when I thought about it. When I thought about the 15 blessings that our bishop released on this house last week Sunday. When he released the blessing that you will live and not die. I pray that you soaked and tapped into it. He said, you will live and not die. You will not be like Reuben. You will live. And he released on this house the blessing of increase. In this house, we will see increase. Increase will not only be the story of all nations church, but it will be the story of everyone that steps foot into this place. You will have increase. And he, re he released the, the, the blessing of extreme favor. Extreme favor be upon us. Restoration over whatever was lost shall be restored. There's a blessing of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There's a blessing of manifestations during our prophetic worship. Amen. Specifically spoke that over our prophetic worship. Every month, the next month, next week is our May prophetic worship dedicated to the country Haiti. Amen. Two years ago, three years ago, the Lord laid on our hearts to dedicate that. A, a month of the anniversary or celebration, Independence Day, right? Or is it Independence? Is what? Flag Day. 
Yes, Haitian Flag Day. And we celebrate that in worship, calling on God over the land of Haiti. Amen. Amen. And then there's a blessing of abundance of rain. And I remember he mentioned that he heard rain three times and I soaked into the rain three times. Rain, rain, rain. There will be abundance of the latter rain, the former rain, and the rains of the future. We will soak in all of the rains. Hallelujah. Then there was a release of things that have been held back to be released. Season of engagement with people of authority. And I soak into that. This season you will engage with people of authority. You will engage with governors. Oh, you are, you are too slow with your amens. You will engage in people sitting in, in places of honor. They will invite you just for your wisdom. They invite you to sit in. You will engage them. Hallelujah. Amen. Then there is a season, a time of termination of the assignment of your divorce. Their assignment will be terminated. Line crossing. We, we will be crossing lines, breaking barriers. What they said nobody in your bloodline has done, you will do it. Amen. Then there was release on us the season of new opportunities. I see opportunities coming your way. I see new opportunities. Listen, if you thought you messed yesterday's opportunity up or you missed it, God is not only the God of second chances. He's the God of many opportunities. And this season, I declare over you that you are positioned in the place where your eyes will locate your open door and you will enter it. You will no longer miss your opportunities. Your opportunity of breakthrough, your opportunity of open doors, your opportunity of elevation, you will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, shout amen. I believe in these blessings. Then there was, a, the, there was the release of protection and preservation. In this, in this phase of our, of, of, our, of our lives as a church, laughter will be heard in this house. Oh, you will laugh. I see, I see many of you basking through, the, uh, I mean, pushing the doors of, of, of this house open with laughter. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, God will cause you to laugh. Where the enemy designed for you to weep, you will laugh. Where they expected you to mourn, you will rejoice. Where they expected you to walk with your head bowed down, your head will be lifted up. It is your season of rejoicing and laughter. It shall be heard and it will spill out of your windows. Your neighbors will want to come and see. Press your bed. Why is your music so loud? Why are you dancing? alone in your house. Why are you having a party by yourself? It is because when God turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. I will say of the Lord, He has been. You will sing your own song. You will sing your own praise song. The times where you danced other people's dance is over. You praise other people's praise is over. You sang because other people were singing is over. This time you will sing your own song. You will dance your own dance. I don't know who is receiving this, but I see the Lord lifting you up out of shame into honor and you will glorify God. You will dance again. Your days of being broke are over. You will no longer walk in poverty. You are walking in divine wealth. I wish I had some believers in this house who are soaking into these blessings that have been released into this house and say yes. Yeah, yeah. Laughter will be heard. Laughter will be heard. The barren womb will conceive. The unmarried will marry. You know, today after all of you, this service is done. We are officiating a wedding. Very nice wedding here. We are, we are officiating a blessing. And as we officiate it, we are declaring opening of doors for many marriages. And you will marry well. You will not marry and regret you married. You will marry and enjoy your marriage. Ah. Every day will be a honeymoon for you. You say, baby, it's been five years. Yeah, we are still honeymoon. Is that even three? And we are still on the honeymoon because the Lord will bless you. I bless this house. 
In the name of Jesus. The fact that your father and your mother divorced doesn't mean that you will divorce. The fact that they separated doesn't mean you will separate. Their mistake will not become your mistake. Their demons will not become your demons. Their failures will not become your failure. I declare that you will marry well and you live married. Let me hear some genetics lift up a shout. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling the first service that I'm a son of prophecies and promises. I, I do not receive prophecies and, 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 you know, promises and just let it go. My mind and my heart soak into it. I don't wait for another person to say, oh, maybe there's not so for me to think about it. When I hear it, I walk into it. And it has worked. It works better than magic. It works better, better than sorcery and divination. It works better than witchcraft. This principle of God has said, and we walk in it. I have seen it manifest, and I declare on this new Sunday into our next 15, that the prophecies and the, and the, and the declarations of God concerning this house and on your life, you will live them. There are so many things that God said. You know, I, I was sharing this morning, you know, some of my guests from, from SA1 and the pastors, when we were talking, they asked me, Pastor, how? So how do you do this and all of that? I said, no. When God tells me something and, and God says, do this, I do not have time to reason it out or ask questions. Because if God said it, then he must provide it. So we step into it by faith. So if these are the declarations of God, you live each day in it. You know, some people ask me, so how, when, what's going to, what must I do? Just live. Let him be God. Let him be God. You cannot coerce, you cannot manipulate the hand of God. You cannot twist the hand of God by some act, no. He would do it. And that is why this word that he gave us for this Sunday into the next phase is so important to me. When I asked, I was asking God, what must I preach? He kept telling me that tell them that we must manifest presence or he will manifest his presence in this house. And that is what we are certain. And my, my, my assignment this day, as I did in the first service, is to cast the vision. And the vision will be built. Every one of these 15, there was a 15th one, great adventures of God. We will enter into great adventures. Listen, every one of these declarations and what God has said he will do would only happen if we lock in into his presence. So much hard presence. That must be our focus. To everyone at the sound of my voice. If you've never understood presence, understand presence today. Your next birthday, celebrating your best, your, your next anniversary will all be logged into his presence. Into his presence. Somebody shout presence. 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 I realize that we don't talk a lot about the presence of God. And the thing is that this generation, we dilute the essence of the presence of God. We dilute the presence and we, we, we instead replace the presence with technology, with, f with fake uh, um, smoke and um, lighting and all of that. And we think that the glory has filled the house. With lighting and with, with specialty and, you know, no, 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 no. All of these lightings have no, this is not the glory, the presence that we are talking about. This is beautiful. We believe in this. It is to enhance worship. But presence is bigger than lighting. Yeah. Presence is bigger than outward appearance. The sons of Korah understood it in the psalm that they, they sang in Psalm 42. They wrote out of desperation. And they, they, they long for, they, they said, you know, our hunger and our quest for his presence can only be compared to one thing. A thirsty deer in a dry land. In a hot, sun-scorching, heat-filled wilderness, dryness. And being a deer in that place and you are thirsty, gasping, looking. For water to drink. 
He said, that is what our quest for his presence must be like. It must be like that dear. I, 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 I need water. Have you been thirsty to the point where you felt like I'll drink anything? Go to the hospital right now. And you'll see people that are just, just anything, a drop on my tongue. The psalmist says that to be in his presence, to love God and to experience God, we must have that hunger, desperation. That is what will bring us into everything that we have received. It's not in the screaming and the shouting, 15 prophetic blessings. Yes, yes, I will live and not die, but it must be in what is not seen behind closed doors. Panting. Panting. At least you know, panting. And you're doing that long distance. And you, are, you must finish. Your eyes are set on the goal. Panting. I need to finish it. You need his presence. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was ever a thing, some glucose, energy drink, something that must keep you, go, keep you going and alive, it is the presence of God. May God give you an overdose of his presence. Anytime you feel distance from him, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. Why? Because of three things. Because without his presence, you are a failure. How do you succeed without the presence of God? Tell me. With what? How can you succeed? That was the sense of Korah. They understood that without the presence of God, life will fail. Marriage will fail. Uh, um, business will fail. Everything will fail. You need the presence of God. And they, they also understood how frail and powerless and limited we are in our own strength. We are limited. What can you do in your strength? What, what, what? Tell me. Isaiah chapter 40 says that he gives strength to those who have no might. He increases their strength. And so those who wait on, he said even the lions and the young lions, sometimes they get tired, they, ex they, they feel exhausted. But they, those who wait on the Lord, who learn or who have learned the secret of tarrying in his presence. 24 hours of prophetic praise and worship should not be an event that happens once a day. It must be a place in your life, an altar that you have raised for yourself. His presence. So much out his presence. His presence. Without his presence, your enemies will destroy you. If you don't know, you have enemies. Whether you accept it or not, there is one who is called an arch enemy. He doesn't like you. Satan doesn't like you. Ladies and gentlemen, he's not your friend. He hates you. He hates you, one, because you have taken his place. You are in the presence of God. You have been saved by the blood. You have destroyed the agenda. Every day he's roaring like a lion, seeking whom he might devour, and you will not be the one. And the place to be is in that secret place, his presence. They that dwell in the secret place of the Lord, the presence of God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If there is any place you want to hide to in the times that we are living in right now, in this world, the 21st century world, America's world, President Biden's world, if there is any place that you must hide to, it is in his presence. You must know the presence. You must love his presence. You must desire his presence. You must long for his presence. 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 Think about it. Presence. In Hebrew, it is that same phrase for the face of God. The presence of God is his face. And a man who understood it very well was a man called Moses. He had walked with God. God called him in chapter 3, and he questions God. How do you know who you're calling? Don't you even realize that I can't speak well? I'm, I'm a stammerer. He gave every excuse in the book to say, no, God, I, I am not the person for this job. And God says that, go and tell that I am, that I am has sent you. In other words, I am. Before you were, I am. Before you were born, I am. 
Before they got into 430 years of slavery, I am. Before you became you, I am, and I am is with you. What is it about I am that don't you understand? Moses said, you know what, then give me another person to go with that I can see. So God said, I'll give you Aaron. Go with Aaron. God gave me Aaron to be a spokesperson. He walked with God in chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. The people have been released from Egypt. Fine. They have crossed the Red Sea. Fine. And then he comes to a place in chapter 33. And then God says, Moses, I am tired of these people. I'm not going to go with you. Because you people are so stiff-necked, I will kill all of you on the way. So let me send you angels. Instead of going, I am giving you messengers. Moses suddenly sits up, has learned his lesson, and says, my God. No, 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 no. If indeed I have found grace in your sight, then show me your way. I cannot go without you. God says that Moses, now you have learned. Now you know what my presence is and what my presence means. So this is what I will do, Moses. My presence will go with you. And I will show you my way. In other words, there is a way that God walks and it's not the way of man. And that way is a presence. Moses then says, turn to God and say, aha. Now if this presence does not go with us, leave us here. Because you can't carry us without your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, can you come to yourself and say to God that God, on this day that you woke me up, I am not stepping into this day without your presence. My life is empty without your presence. If you saved me by your blood, please show me your way. Not the way of man. The way of man will fail. The way of man will only take me to the middle and leave me. The way of man will disappoint, but the way of God is always sure. You can always rely on his way because when he gives you his way, he doesn't only send angels which represent his hand, but he gives you his face. And in that face, all other things will follow. Somebody shout his presence. The overall existence of a person. That is what presence is. The overall existence. The state and the fact of existence, the, 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 the presence of God means that God exists. It means God is there. He's there. Whether you like it or not, He's there. How many of you have ever seen electricity running through any world before? Have you seen the current, the, 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 the electricity power running through? You don't see it, but you believe it. So you walk to a switch and you turn it on. Why? Because you know that there is power in the switch. You only turn it on. Because you think that, oh, when I turn it on, there is power running through this that will come through these things and will tell me, give me light. You go to a tap, you go to a faucet. You haven't seen the water yet, but you open it. Because you have been made to believe that there is water coming out. And you just drink it. You wash your hands. You don't ask questions unless you haven't paid. Until, I mean, if you haven't paid your bill, that's a different thing. <laughs> but, but you doubt that God is so real and is with you. And that your very existence right now, even sitting right here in this place, in the place that you are sitting in your blessed assurance, Looking around you, looking all beautiful, you doubt that he is with you and he is in you. All you have to do is to turn it on and say, Lord, I believe you are with me. That is all it takes. But whether you believe it or not, it doesn't take his presence away. Because he's God. He's God. He's omnipresent. 412 Linden Avenue. He's here. Go to... Go to Haiti right now. He's there. He's in Asia. Everywhere, same time, God never misses it. He is an ever present God. Omnipresent, everywhere, God. But then there is something that Moses learned, and the Bible teaches us that even, God, even though God is omnipresent and is everywhere, God, there is also an element of Him that is revealed in what is called the manifest presence. Somebody say manifest presence. Manifest presence is when he shows up and says that I am in every place at the same time, but I have come for you. 
that I am here. It is you. May God give you that report that you are the reason he is here in this room right now. That's what Jesus did in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, he was. And then the word became flesh. He became the face of God that dwells amongst us. The manifest presence. I declare over you the manifest face and presence of God in this season in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that's why it's so key that you seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He was saying, seek ye first the face of God, the presence of God. Psalm 16 and verse 8. I have set the Lord always. Somebody say always. always. Not some days. Because there are bad times where you feel like God has left you. In those bad times is where his presence is even more evident. That his presence is even more stronger. There is no place where God leaves you. And so you set the Lord Always, always, always before you, because he's at my right hand, I shall not be. Do you know what it means to be at the right hand of somebody? At the right hand. At the right hand. You're at my right hand. Safety, security, proximity, provision. I am right here. I am by your side. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow means that it is so present. Death is so present. But because you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yes, it feels like I am dying right now. But I am. The Lord is by my right hand. He will not allow my feet to be moved. He that watches over Israel, show my Israel. He never sleeps nor slumber. The Lord is my watcher. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the lifter up of my head. If you understand this presence, nothing shall cause you to fear. Set my eyes always on him. All nations shall for the years ahead. Set your eyes on the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 4 says that I sought the Lord. And he heard me. And he delivered me. Not from some fears. But all fears. What are you afraid of? Is it the money that you don't have in your account? Is it the fact that the school has written to you that you have only seven days? If you don't pay the seven days, you'll be kicked out of school and so you're afraid? Is it the job that is telling you and threatening you with, with all kinds of things? If the Lord is with me, I seek him and nothing shall cause me to fear. I don't know if you understand it. There, there's another place where he says that what then shall man do to me? If the Lord is with me, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Psalm 27, whom shall I fear? Somebody shall have presence. presence. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get this understanding. That presence is bigger than the clothes you are wearing. Because none of you just get up and step out without dressing up. In that same way as a believer, there must not be a single day where you step out without his presence. It must be your garment and your dress. If there is any makeup, any, any cologne you must put on, if there are any extensions you want to put on, if there's any wig you must wear, it must be an extension of his presence. You must say, Lord, I don't need any other All I need is you. I want to know you more and more when I know you. I find, when I find your presence, when I know your presence, I find who I am. I cannot find myself outside his presence. No. It's not in anybody's money. It is in his presence. Am I coming through? So the psalmist said, one thing I have desired, Psalm 27 verse 4, and this is all that I long for. This is what I desire. This is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is his presence. The place where he dwells, on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Please desire the house of the Lord. All the days, not some of the days. Some, somebody say all. all. All the days. Don't only run to God because demons were chasing you in your dreams. Or because you wanted a job. Or you wanted to get married. And I see that a lot. Many people go to church because they know they want to get married. As soon as they are married, they are gone. Forget you, God. There are some that even begin to serve everywhere. We have seen them doing church 15 years. We have seen quite a bit. They came and they were seven. They were the ones from drums to keyboards to ushers. The next time they were cleaning the bathroom. They were doing everything because they wanted, they were on an agenda. And the day God gave it to them, they said, okay, God, I am too busy. 
And especially when they begin to have children, all of a sudden, the children you gave me, and the children are keeping me busy. And because of the children, I can't come to church. Really? Now you've let go of his presence because of the blessing? No wonder sometimes he holds some blessings from you because he knows the day you get that blessing, you put him on a second, you, you put him on a hold. You put God on a parking lot. Yeah. God is a wise God, though. You know, this new, I said the other day, this New Testament church, we must thank God that he didn't let, let us live in the Old Testament times. Yeah. Now you are getting it. This New Testament era, Sometimes just worship God. Father, thank you for grace in the New Testament. Thank you for letting me live in the New Testament because by the Old Testament time, nobody will be in this room. Yeah. The things we take for granted. The thing we, we take everything for granted. We think it must be, oh, oh, oh it's, it's okay, just, just let it be. But show me anyone that succeeded in the Old Testament. Anybody that God used, mention a name. And you realize that they could never become what they became without a presence. It was the presence that made them. In the miracles was present. Fire from heaven, presence. In the lion's cage, can you imagine? Being thrown into the cage of hungry lions. Some of you are afraid of dogs that, that even... <laughs> Even by the back of a dog, you are dying. Yeah. Cat, you can't. Lizards, you can't. And then you are thrown into the den of lions. Think about it. But it was in the lions then that Daniel had his best sleep. The place that they thought he would be devoured and destroyed was the place God gave him so much rest. The very lions became his pillows. When you carry his presence, where they expect you to die is the place you will live. Where they expect you to be buried, it will become your place of glory. Why? Because the Lord is with you. Presence. Mention David. Oh, yes. For 10 years plus, Saul was throwing javelins to kill him. But presence kept him. His own mentor. Now was, meant, was tormenting him because he had been demon possessed. Yet God's presence kept him. So when he sings songs like the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul and all those things and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You, you haven't gone through the valley of the shadow of death. When Saul's javelin is after you. Show me a man in the New Testament. We study the Acts of the Apostles. A man, Paul, carried so much presence that he walked to a place that aprons and handkerchiefs from his body, even in his shadow, his disciples, people would just walk by their shadow like this. Like, like please step in this shadow. Step in, you see my shadow. Just that, and they are healed. That people come around them and miracles, presence, presence. And, and you don't want this? You want to be in the club? You want to be hanging out? You want to be hanging out in wrong parties? You, you, you sacrifice church to be in some, some place because, you know, I must go. Presence! Look at this church. Who, who, who dare tells you that there's no presence in this room? I can already feel it. Presence. D don't you feel the presence? Yeah. The, the 24 hours. Presence. The sick we're getting this morning, I was sharing those testimonies. And there are some, many more, that we haven't even heard. 
that woman, the moment she said, Pastor, I sent you a text. I needed you to tell my testimony. She ran to me the moment it was 8 p.m. Pastor, she came right there and said, Pastor, look at me. I can raise my hand. I said, why? For 20 years, she hasn't been able to raise her hand. 20 years. And you say, God is not here. God is not real. Look at the lives that he has changed. Look at your own life. Look at how messed up you were. Sometimes you should tell people, no, please explain. Wait, wait, let me tell you my story. Now some of you, I see today the way you dress up for church. I'm like, wow. What a shock. We remember when you came. How broken. Yet God has lifted you up. I'm looking at some of you. These days, the cars you even drive. But you are so broke, nobody would give it, even give you a ride. Because they were afraid by, by you sitting in their car. But today, God has blessed you. Look at how well he has raised you. Come on, give God some praise. Restoration is in the house. If you haven't been, I have been restored. Every day I walk in is a day of restoration. What God has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I love his presence. I want you to picture this because when you allow his presence, you, 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 you learn his presence. Man, the way your life will be so beautiful. People will wonder, they try to explain you out and they can't. I mean, woman... I mean, what is wrong with you? You just lost this person. You just lo lost a loved one. You have this person sick, but you are carrying yourself out. The joy of the Lord has become your strength, and you are singing his praises, and people are expecting you to be broken, but you are up. They're expecting you to be, to be you know, all kinds of things, but somehow the joy of the Lord is keeping you. Somehow, it is a presence. The presence of God makes the difference. It is the maker of his people. The presence of God will beautify you. Ladies and gentlemen, you must desire his presence more than anything. Orange in church, from every ministry, presence. Any ministry that is operating outside the presence, we will shut it down. Because you must love his presence. You must love to be there. Am I, am I, listen, I will say it, hammer it, hammer it until today you leave home and all you are thinking is, you are even speaking and you are saying presence. And people are saying, what did you just say? Oh, I meant, you know, but his presence is with me. It must become your food. It must become your daily, daily water as the deer pants for the water. So my soul longs for you. Why? Because when you love his presence, few things happen, number one. The reason why you must love his presence, number one, there is life in his presence. The Bible says that in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. The, 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 the bishop declared the blessings of you will live and not die. It is in his presence. Outside his presence, you are dead. There is life. Somebody say there is life. There is life, there is life in his presence. Number two. In his presence, you receive guidance, direction. It is in presence. You know what to do at each time. It is in his presence. And that's what I shared with you when, when you asked me, oh, Pastor, how do you and how are we going to do this? God will do it. He, he will give us the guidance for it. That is what Moses meant when he asked God. And he said that if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. Because that is a place of gaining direction. You need a job. It is in, in his presence. You want to marry, stay in his presence. Forget about the married thing. Some of you, you think you can just, you know, fool God. You are here like, oh, I came to worship you. No, you came to look for your husband. Oh, one person started clapping. And I think I thought. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's okay. We want you to get married. But that must become your after all these, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things. It must never become first. The reason people, pastor, the young men are not here. They used to pray, they used to tell me that some years ago. Pastor, where are the young men? The church, there are no young men. But look at you. They, they look around you. All the young men are here. And where are you? Priority. You see how you are murmuring. I can hear all the things you are saying. 
But there is life. Somebody say there is life. And there is guidance. He will guide you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. This is the verse that has kept me from when I was a teenager to date. Trusting in him. I acknowledge you God. Did you say do it? Okay, let's do it. Where is 24 hours? How are you going to bring all those people? 17 of them, international guests. People were saying, hey, how are you doing? How are you going to pay them? He didn't, he didn't tell me about money. He told me to worship. I was to call them to worship. Will you come and worship or not? And when he brings them, he makes provision. I've been young. Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his children beg for bread. When you live in his presence, you will never beg for bread. Amen. You will not beg for bread. Because in his presence, there is provision. Genesis 22, 13 and 14. The Bible says that Abraham looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught up by its thorns. When he went to sacrifice his only son, to him was a sacrifice. When he was telling the people down at the, at, the, at, at the feet of the mountain before he climbed up. He said, my son and I are going to worship and we shall, we shall be back. Moses, uh, Abraham, I beg your pardon. God says, go and sacrifice him. And he says, no, I'm going to worship. Because he knew that in the place of his presence, there is always provision. In the place of worship, when you understand it, you would rather love to be in his presence. May God give you provision in his presence in the name of Jesus. In his presence, there is protection from your enemies. In his presence, he brings you promotion and progress. In his presence, he brings you divine favor. Somebody shout favor. favor. I like the way we explained it this morning. I want to do it again. Somebody shout favor. favor. You, know, you know what favor is like? How many of you have seen favor before? If you haven't seen favor before, look at this young man. This is a definition of favor. I am favored. Who ever thought that a young boy like me from Cape Coast will be here pastoring you? It's favor. Holding a mic on top of it, it's favor. The five of you, come. I used you this morning. Please come. You know favor? When, 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 you, when God gives you favor, he's the, she's the first to receive the gift I have. The gift of five million dollars. I have it. They don't know that this is the gift I want to give them. In the book, she is qualified. In the book, she is the one. In the book, she looks the part, speaks the, fa- the part, smells the part. Everything is Sasha. That is what is in the record book. But God in his wisdom says that I'm bringing favor. And that favor is going to whomever I desire to give that favor to. So I go past one, go past two, go past three, go past four. And say that you are favored to receive the five million dollars that I have. Did he work for it? He didn't work for it. God is saying that I have picked you from the backside of the desert. And brought you to the front because I have seen you and I recognize you and I've singled you out. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me what did I do. All it is is favor. He brings you. David forgotten. David had been left at the backside. But at the backside, he was just in God's presence with a harp. Just praising God. Just blessing God. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless you. And he was attending to sheep. Pushing lions away who had come to tear. But to him, he was just a shepherd boy. Left to work. He didn't think about the throne. His mind was not on anointing. His mind was not on what would, would, would I get in being in the wilderness. All he desired was in his presence. His presence. I will stay here with my harp. Bless the Lord. 
wrote all the psalms you enjoy. But then God decides to show him favor. Goes to the son of Je uh, the house of Jesse. There is the, the seven sons that look the path. They all have been counted. But then someone says, wait. God, I've counted all of them. And God says this. Samuel, you have looked at the outside. I look at the inside. And because you have looked at the outside, let me show you what I have already planned. Ask the father, where is the son that is thrown outside of the house? In the desert. The one that nobody cares for. The one that nobody thinks about. Ask him, isn't there another child? That is what God does when he shows you favor. When people have forgotten about you, God says that I remember you. And he says, go and send for the one that is forgotten. Why? Because this son has learned the secret of staying in the presence. While the other sons are feasting and enjoying the comfort of the father's house, he was in the wilderness alone. And that is why favor found him. I pray this morning that the favor of God will locate you. Bring you from the back. When God gives you his presence, he gives you rest. Your struggles will be over. You didn't hear me. God will give you, oh, you will find rest in him. Rest, 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 rest. You will rest in the Lord. Your days of battles will end. And you know what God will do? God will bring you joy. The Bible says that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Read from me, Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. Please be seated. God will give you joy. Joy. You will show me the path of life. In your presence. It's fullness. Somebody shout fullness. 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 At your right hand are pleasures. You know what pleasures are? What, what do you call a pleasure? They are there at the right hand. Whatever you are desiring is right there in his presence. And you, you are struggling trying to make it by yourself. It is right there in his presence. You are trying. You, you say, oh, I must do, I must work hard. Yes, you must work hard. But you are working with your own strength. Plug it into his presence and watch what God will do with you. I pray this presence upon you in this season. So you ask me, Pastor, how do I get to this presence? Number one, it's in purity. Present yourself to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. A sacrifice dedicated to God. Consecrate yourself. Separate yourself. Don't be like everybody else. The fact that everybody else is doing it doesn't mean it is right. Oh, the fact that they are doing it doesn't mean that you can do it too. They are telling you, oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You can have sex before marriage. It's okay. When you have sex, it's going to be the same person. You must test drive it. Are you a car? <laughs> and I hear some of you are following the, those teachings on social media because some people are standing in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Bible, and telling you that it's okay for you. If you are going to get married, it's okay that you must have sex now. You go ahead. You go ahead. Here we will tell you. Consecrate. Yeah. You are not married, you are living in the house. Now that I'm in the area, let me stay there. Because some of you are very uncomfortable. Yeah. Presence. You are not married. He said he will marry you doesn't mean that he has married you. Why do you give him things that he must work hard for? To make it easy. So when he marries you and then he says, it's your, you, you did it. And they blame you. Because you, make, you made it very easy for them. That is arm robbery. That is stealing. Janek, say amen. Amen. Say amen. Wait, you're going, the thing is, for the rest of your life, till that do us part, she's going to be yours. So right now, just, just wait. Just chill. Why are you running to? Say, Pastor, I'm burning, I'm burning. Go, go and burn. Go and burn somewhere. <laughs> if you are in this church and you have that agenda to come and take our young girls and destroy them, eh, may the fire of...
You come and lie to them and, and then mislead them. It will not happen in the name of Jesus. And all of you young girls too, when they come, don't follow. The, the moment they show up and dress a little bit, he say, oh yeah, he's the guy. Five of you chasing the same boy. By the way, hear me. Hear me, young man. Hear me. Stop promising the ladies. You promise this one. You start. You take her on one date, two dates. They say, this one is not of God. God did not tell me to. Then you go to another. In the same church, you are dating 10 girls. Six months here, four months here, one year here. And you say, oh, God didn't tell me. If God didn't tell you, why did you start in the first place? If they come and tell you God told me, tell them, please go and tell pastor first. This is your next service. You must hear it. In the name of, in the name of, and God told me, and God is telling me that I shouldn't. God didn't say anything. Your emotions was your, was your prophet. How did we get there? How did we end up over there? Somebody's our presence. Yeah. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. Young girls, young girls, you know, pride in the fact that I waited. Walk to the altar with pride. When you are wearing the white, you know nobody has defiled it. You walk the, you know, when he says, you know, now, when the pastor says, now you may, you, you may, you're like, ha, ah, Lord, ah, ah, I waited, I worked hard. Don't make it easy. Pastor Mike, you must tell them all. They're making it too easy for the guys. So, pa Pastor God will bless him. And so right now, I'm taking care of him. And so you, you go for lunch and he's paying. You go for dinner and he's paying. Everything and he's saying, oh, let me use your card to buy gas. The guy is not ready for you. If he's begging now, he'll beg you the rest of his life. Uh, where, where, where was I before? <laughs> Purity. Purity. Separate yourself. Small. Small. Consecrate yourself. Am I helping you? If your boyfriend or girlfriend is here, tell them today, today, eh, today, today, today. The, ne the next time will be when we have walked the aisle and the honeymoon. Has See, now you have eaten all the honey. So when you go to the moon, the honey is finished. <laughs> Number two, you get his presence through prayer. Stay in prayer, amen? Love to pray. Stay in prayer. Number three, live a life of praise, a life of worship a life of thanksgiving. Let it become a lifestyle. Don't let worship only become something you do at church. Can I get an amen? amen? Worship, praise and worship should not only become something you do when we come together. That's why we struggle. You see, Minister Sibu and the rest are, are lifting, lift your hand and you, your hand is here. Because there's no worship in you. Say, so how do they do it? You are not living it. Because it's, it's easy when you live a life of worship. Man, you are running late for service. Worship us. You will run from the gate. You will not stop at the uh, bathroom. Forget about the wig that is not straightened up. The weave that is this, the makeup that I couldn't get time to. Some of you, you come and doing worship. That is when you are in the bathroom. Worship is going on. You don't fear God. And you are doing makeup. And you are humming it. <laughs> run! Who are you going to show that thing to? It is God. He has already seen it. Bring it. I like the way you are looking at me. Because I've said exactly what you do. He said, how did he know? This one is not by flesh and blood. Yeah. Sometimes I watch people. Where I sit in my office, sometimes I open windows and I see things. Between, 
Between first service and second service, when first service is done and second service is beginning, I open the window and I just observe. Attitude into his presence. People's attitude. You are coming to church in his presence five minutes late. And you are now chatting and talking and now looking for food that you're going to eat after church. And worship is going on. You must desire. Don't let anybody stop you in the hallway. I must run. You should tell them. The time I have from getting ready for church into worship start, five minutes or so, I must go and change. Because I'm here early. And I'm running. Because I don't want to miss any part of worship. And I told them, when I'm in the worship, don't come and tell me somebody's looking for me. Don't distract my flow. Today you can worship and you are chewing gum and you are texting your boyfriend in the worship, in the worship service and whilst in the presence of God. You don't fear God. Do you still love me? Yes. The next 15 years, presence. Somebody Tell somebody presence. presence. Some, tell somebody cherish his presence. Cherish. Love his presence. It is in prayer, it is in your praise, and it is in the word. Live a life of the word. Live in the word. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate any day in and day out. And number five, be humble. So tell somebody humility. humility. You must humble yourself. Humble yourself. I told them this morning. I said, listen, will you rather have God resist you or Satan resist you? Because the Bible says that it is God who resists the proud. So when you are proud, Satan says, ah, I leave you into the hands of God. Satan doesn't bother people who are proud. Because you know God who deals with you. God, if God is humbling you, that is why humility is not something God does to you. Humility is what you do to God. Because if God were to humble you, eh? Mm. And so there are some five things that I wrote down this morning, or six things that we must do together with our mindset to live in his presence. Number one, we must, ha we must have the same mind. As a church, vibrant church, growing church mind, mindset, mentality of growth and its presence. All of us must have it. Somebody say one mind. Wow. Number two, we must walk in the same vision. Don't bring your own vision here. Bring, there's a vision that God has given into the house. Plug into it. Number three, unity. Avoid division at all costs. Appreciate the role of other ministries. It's not media against VOJ, VOJ against ushers. No, we are not against anybody. I am not your enemy. Tell somebody I'm not your enemy. I am not your opposition. Why would I destroy or sabotage your work in this place? No, it won't happen. So work in unity and number something. Number four, know the common enemy. That's what I just said. The common enemy is Satan. I am not your enemy. She's not your enemy. He's not your enemy. We are in this together. And number five, be committed. Commitment to preparation. Commitment to one another. Commitment to paying the price. Commitment to winning together. And the final thing is that we must, be, we must show enthusiasm at all times. Have you been blessed? Yes. Somebody shout presence. Yes. Stand on your feet. My work is done.